I wish this combo cost 10 grand. Why? Because then it would just be a very simple, regular high five video. Well, in terms of finding a speaker amplifier combo that brings a synergy that will just defy what you've heard and think you know so far. Is this hi fi perfection under $3,000? Thomas, there's still giant's blood on the deck from your last amplifier. And now, you have built in a transmission line speaker to break more rules. Thomas, you're going to pick a fight. Yes, you are. And I like it. And since you're not trying to break our wallets, I'm with you. Eleven ninety-five a pair. All right, I'm in. Let's go break some rules. What have you done, Thomas? This is not a review. This is my unqualified opinion. I never graduated from a school of acoustic geniuses or engineering or even common sense. So what do I know? Well, I know what you know. Not much. But I'm lucky I get to play with hi-fi gear without buying it. So why watch my videos? Because it's entertaining and awesome. Duh. You didn't catch my video on the TSA 75. I still stand by what I said. Do I consider this amplifier a giant killer? for several reasons. Air resolution just gives you an immersive and engaging soundstage. It's powerful bass, tight, controlled. You feel the instruments. The highs and upper mid-range are sweet and sparkle. It gives you some dynamic and intense, but yet soft. Galleon TSA 75, all that, 1495 USD, giant killer. The one gap that that amplifier had that really stopped it from being considered a perfect amplifier I mean, considering its price point of $1,500, guys, was its mid-range. The mid-range was good, but compared to what it could do in terms of air resolution, sound staging, and bass performance, it was the one thing that was just slightly behind the rest. So when he voiced the Voyager TL speakers, he voiced them to be as buttery smooth in the mid-range as possible. So guess what happens when you marry the two together? I can't find a damn thing wrong when listening to these speakers with the TSA 75. I really can't. With my reference gear, but my reference gear is low watt tube amps. And I gotta tell you, on paper, an 84 dB sensitive speaker with a 6 watt 300B amplifier should not sound good for a second. Well, it kind of did. Oh wait, am I telling you to go buy a 300B amplifier to match it with the transmission line speaker? No, 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 no. I'm only telling you that it surprised the socks off my feet. I'm telling you, they ran away. When I tried this for fun with the Deckware Sarah amp, it was actually pretty damn good. No, 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 I get it. It's 84 dB. Not meant to listen at loud volumes, it clips, for sure. It's 84 dB sensitive. It's not meant to be run over 6 watts. This is where the Galleon TSA 75 and this speaker oh my This is not normal for under $3,000. It is not freaking normal. The only caveat the only caveat I can think of is that this combo in a small room is going to rattle the walls because the bass output is powerful. You can fix this issue by just taking a foam plug, putting it in the port. You know, I don't know about you all, but in my experience, every time I've used bookshelf speakers, the end result was heavily influenced by the stand. The bass is very strong. And 
if you're not decoupling these bookshelves from your floor, especially if your floor is a wood floor that is over an empty space, so a basement or another room underneath that could be, you know, tenants, a uh, bedroom, your landlord. If it's not decoupled from the floor, the amount of base has a tendency to want to convert that floor into like a massive passive radiator. So yeah, you do have the phone plugs as an option. You got the half plug, you got the full plug. Where are the plugs? I don't know where they are. So you can use the phone plugs, but I think just as important is the stands that you're gonna pick when using them. Get stands that decouple the base of these speakers from your floor. And with your stands, you can also use some decoupling, uh, decoupling mechanisms uh, like, uh, you know, there's a bunch of them on the market, uh, like ISO acoustics, that kind of stuff. That's going to greatly help the bass performance with these speakers because it's strong. It's very strong. But when you have that under control, spectacular. Spectacular. So if you're not putting these on a quality stand, this could be the difference between big bloated boomy bass in the room versus articulate detail fast and punchy bass. So I, my stands are, are, are made of MDF and wood, but I filled them up with sand. So they're very, very heavy. Well, very heavy. They're heavy. So the first thing you want to do before setting them up in a room to control the bass is you have to tell them not to play the bass too strongly, too loud. That's why there's a little microphone here. You can talk to them. Speaker, please lower your bass output. Positioning in my room. I was surprised at how big of a soundstage they threw. I thought it sounded good when I had the speakers like two feet away from the wall, like lined up with my, with, with my, my, I guess my audio rack. It sounded good. But I found that the best soundstage, again, maybe it's the way my room is made, is when I had them pulled out at least four and a half, five feet from the wall. To me, that's where I thought the soundstage was the best. Not necessarily in terms of depth, but in terms of width also. The more I pulled them out into my room, the wider the soundstage felt and the better the separation felt as well. Um, it was very three-dimensional in-room. It's a combo under $3,000 that doesn't make any sense because you can have a party, you can sit down and listen like an audiophile in a sweet spot. You're going to get all those cues, you're going to get all that soundstage. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm getting this. My source is a crazy modified source that has cost me about $4,000 in modifications. And I'm using a preamp that I have tube rolled a combination of tubes that is to my liking and degree of nuance and quality. And with those two things, when I use this combo with the TSA 75, it's crazy, crazy audiophile grade magic. This doesn't make sense. It, uh, it really, it, it, it doesn't make sense. How it's not the perfect speaker. It's not the perfect amplifier. But together, they're two pieces of the puzzle that fit and give you such a head start in completing the rest of the puzzle and factor in the price tag, this shouldn't exist. Now, are you gonna get the same result if you're using a very low-end source, a cheap DAC, and you're not using a very good preamp? No, it's not gonna feel as great, as grand, as refined as I'm describing it. If you're starting your journey out, take the guesswork out of it, boom. This and a TSA 75. Uh, that A75, and I'm telling you what, I'm probably going to buy that thing because that is phenomenal. You start off the bat with a solid, solid synergy. And you're already going to have that high-end, hi-fi degree of sound. And then it's a matter of you doing your research to max out your source and to max out your preamp with what's left in your budget. The layers in the soundstage that I get in my room with this combination rivals any commercial system I've ever used, including ones that cost me over $40,000. Are there little subtle nuances that potentially the $40,000 system gave me that this doesn't? Some, sure, maybe. 
I'm weeks into listening to this right now. And whatever those nuances may be, I don't miss them, not for a second. Every music genre I listen to sounds killer. Killer. Not just audiophile jazz stuff, not just the blues, classical, grand orchestral pieces. Heck, the freaking Beastie Boys sound amazing on this. Metallica sounds amazing on this. Guns N' Roses sounds amazing on this. Old school Leonard Skinner sounds amazing on this. The freaking Stones sound amazing on this. Elvis, the Beatles, for under three grand. And over time, you're going to discover what you like, what you don't like. And should you ever feel the need to upgrade out of this, you'll be equipped to do so. But to start off, take the guesswork out of matching a speaker and an amplifier. Voyager TL with the TSA-75, it doesn't get any simpler. The performance to cost value ratio is insanely good here. And I can't say enough about a preamp. Get yourself, when you find that preamp, it will cost you a bit more than most. I recommend a preamp that costs more than this combo. I really do. Because that preamp is going to follow you for the rest of your life or for a big part of it. A good preamp is priceless. As far as sources go, yeah, for sure, it's debatable. It's just that every generation of sources that we move forward into is better than the last generation. I mean, it's companies are getting really good at making at, at making DACs. Um, look, turntable world's a different different animal. It's it, it, you're talking you're talking like four components on the turntable world as opposed to one component when it comes to your DAC. Okay, two components with the streamer. But I don't get it. I I just don't get it. How? How? Thomas, this could be double the price and I'd have the same exact speech. Dude, do you enjoy eating noodles this much? That's why you're okay and not making a dime? I know how much this costs you in R&D to get this off the floor to get it sounding the way you want it to sound. Your business logistics and startup costs. Guys, this is not simple. This is not easy. These speakers break the rules, but they don't break your wallet. It's what makes the whole thing even more flabbergasting. So it makes my brain explode even more. Is that this is a $1,200 a pair. I forgive the tone of my voice right now. I sound even a little aggravated, and I am. Because it doesn't make sense. I'm going to be called a fanboy. I'm going to be called biased because, because I know Thomas. Guys, I know Thomas. I know him through hi-fi. Do you know him? Does he call you at home? I don't know when his birthday is. I don't know his kids' ages. I don't know his kids' names. I know nothing. We know each other based on hi-fi. So, yeah, I'm aggravated. Because there's no way I can convey this message without risking people judging me or, ju or questioning my credibility. A diamond in the rough, man. This speaker, this, this is terrific. If I'm allowed to put a sound system in my living room, this is it. This is it. I mean, I already have my listening room down here. I have my, and it's tuned to my sonic tastes. And when I want to sit down as an audiophile, um, yeah, my sonic tastes vary a little bit from this. But in my living room, when I just want to have fun, I want to feel the bass, I want to feel like there's good textures and that there's good detail and some air, man, nothing in my experience for this price comes close to this combo. So good stands, positioning in the room is key. Make sure you have quality stands, if you have quality stands, it will make the placement of these speakers in your room much easier. If your stands are no good and they are translating all the bass energy down into your wood floor, you are going to suffer for weeks trying to get these positioned. So get good stands. Heavy, little to no vibration that translates from the speaker to the floor. This is key, not just for these, for any bookshelf especially transmission line bookshelves, because the transmission line speaker is built in a way that it will maximize the amount of low-end frequency output, which is the case. And you know what's funny? 
is the first time I listened to it. I didn't fall off my chair at first. No, I didn't. I thought, this is pretty good. I even have my first impression. My first evening of sitting down and listening to the speaker is on my Patreon page. It's like a 20-minute long sound clip of intercut with me talking. I'm just sitting over there on the couch, and I'm listening to this. And I was expecting a V-curve product, because a lot of Thomas's amplifiers were voiced in a V-curve. This is not a V-curve. This is powerful bass, detailed bass, articulated bass, buttery smooth mids, textured mids, with just the right amount of sparkle. It's not the sparkliest, it's not the airiest, but this is where pairing it with the TSA 75 makes a match made in hi-fi heaven. This level of synergy is stupid good. It's freaking good. Look at the depth of this, of this thing. I mean, one would expect it, right? It's a transmission line speaker. So it's got this beautiful pattern. Come on, you stupid fucking focus. Yeah, so this 